You know, we talk a lot about mental health on the show, which is why I'm so happy to have BetterHelp sponsoring this episode. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And if you find that your match therapist isn't working for you, BetterHelp makes it free and easy to find a new one. You can start talking to someone within 48 hours. As a listener, you get 10% off of your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash hollyrandall. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hollyrandall for 10% off today. Hey guys, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Uh, before I introduce my guest, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Care Of. It's a vitamin subscription service that you can curate specifically to your own needs. You just go to their website, takecareof.com, take a quick five minute quiz, and you get your own custom curated vitamins delivered right to your door. It's super convenient. It's amazing. I've been using this service for the last like three years and um, I can't tell you how much I love it. For 50% off of your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code HOLLY50. Okay. So my guest today is your favorite neighborhood cougar. She's a 16 year veteran of the industry, and I'm so excited to finally have her on the show. And I know that so many of you guys are excited that I'm having her on the show because I got a lot of feedback on this. So let's welcome the one and only Rochelle Ryan. Oh, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. It's so great to have you here. And, yeah. and honestly, like when I put out on my Patreon page that you were coming in like people were so excited. Oh, good. So excited. Good. I've been a fan. So I'm like excited to be here. And I've listened to like all your stuff with like, it all depends on the guest who it yes, is. I'll listen to them. Yeah. Of course. Not- Quasar has to be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, you know what makes me sad though is like just because um, not every listener is like familiar with the adult industry, right? You know, and the people in it. So like this episode will probably do very well because you're a very well-known name. Um, so like big names will do well, but sometimes like Mike Quasar, we all know him and love For him, sure. but like the general public, he's not like a, por- a hot porn star with big tits. So they're like, oh, yeah. who's that guy? Yeah. So sadly, like, I feel like not as many people have listened to that episode as should. But he's hysterical. Hysterical. Like- <laughs> I love him. Yeah, he's great. He's so funny. We love Mike. Um, so Rochelle, tell me, um, tell me how you got started in the industry. So I was working as a house dancer at a strip club in Richmond, Virginia called the Paper Moon. And the club that I worked at brought in feature entertainers, like the adult film stars. So I got to meet like Gina Lynn and Nikki Benz and Claudia Monet, like some of like the, you know, the veteran girls. And um, I was just so intrigued. And I started watching porn, not for like sexually, but just I wanted to be like the women in the movies. I just wanted to get glammed up and just wear like sexy outfits. And <laughs> and I have to say that still to this day, that's like my favorite part is mm-hmm. I love getting glammed up and just taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> like, the sex is just a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I just started doing research on like who are the best agents in LA and just started asking some of the girls that would come through. And that was back in the days of my space. So I was like DMing people on there. And um, next thing I knew, I was flying out to L.A., meeting with agents, and boom, bang, off to the races it went. <laughs> what agency did you start with? So you probably remember her, September Dawn oh, with yeah, Exotic Star Models. Yes. Yeah, she was my first agent. Wow. Yeah, she was She was amazing. She was just great. And I love Jenna, of course. I mean, I have her same exact tattoo on my butt. And um, I love Jenna, and that was great. But then, um, then I ended up going on to Gold Star Modeling and just kind of doing my rounds. But I haven't had an agent in like eight years, which I wouldn't never have an agent again. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've gotten to the point now where you don't. I'm really responsible. Know. I've had the same number forever. If anybody important wants to book me, they have my number. Yeah. Yeah. But I would imagine that you probably as most girls these days is doing a lot of time, like making your own content. Oh yeah. Content creation is key now. Yeah. I only want to shoot for the top companies like 
two to four times a month and I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, I just want to focus on my OnlyFans and, and, um, yeah, that's key right now. (laughs) What is it about like this shift in the industry and this ability to make money on your own content that you think is like, like what, what about it? Um, do you love? I mean, you know, Holly, for years we have made the companies so much money, Mm -hmm. insane amounts of money. And granted, yes, they all helped us build our names and our brand. But I mean, let's be honest, like what we get paid as talent is peanuts. I mean, they're making money on us till after we die. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So now it's like we can, we can be as creative as we want. I mean, obviously within like guidelines and stuff Mm -hmm. for posting on OnlyFans, but we can just be as creative and have as much fun as we want and own the content and make so much money, Mm -hmm. (laughs) more than we would get paid. Um, But I do still love being on set. Tomorrow I'm going to shoot for Brazzers while I'm out here. And I love, I love being on set. I love the camaraderie between, you know, everyone. And it's great. But I mean, when I first got in the business, I was doing like 25 to 28 scenes a month. I mean, I was having to like tell my agent like, hey, I need a day off. I have to go get my nails done, go to the tanning bed, like get my hair done. Mm -hmm. Um, And then even before the whole OnlyFans buzz came about, I mean, I was still shooting about 10 to 15 times a month, Mm -hmm. which, you know, for me, I never would have thought in a million years I'd be here 16 years later. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. And here I am and I'm still enjoying it. I still have fun with it. Do you think that you would still be here 16 years later if if you didn't have the kind of freedom that you do now where you don't have to like shoot as often as you did before, do you think you would have burned out by now? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would have been burnt out. <laughs> what are, so what are some of the studios that you will still work for and like why specifically? Um, Brazzers, Bang Bros, Reality Kings, Naughty America, um, you know, any of like the top companies, you know, of course, like Playboy and like Centerfold mm-hmm. and, um, you know, just any of the real big ones that have, you know, the traffic and, you know, cause eventually I want their traffic. I want their social media right. following. I want to be on their platform and their channels. Um, you know, cause when I first got in the business, I was shooting for anyone and everything mm-hmm. with a camera <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and that will just kind of like, you know, it scares you a little bit. Cause you know, now I'm like, I see some of those scenes and I'm like, Oh God, Mm -hmm. why did I work with you? Yeah. (laughs) Why did I work with you? You know, but it's like, you're still so new and you don't want to like upset your agent Mm -hmm. versus like now, like, I mean, I haven't had an agent, but I'd be like, yeah, kick rocks. (laughs) You work for me. I pay you. Yeah. Well, I think also too, when you first start out, it's hard to imagine like how big you can become. hundred percent. And so you don't really recognize your worth until you're at that stage. hundred percent. Wow. I should have known this earlier, but then there's like the question of, well, if I had like kind of taken that attitude earlier, like would I have been hired to get where I am today? Cause I face the same thing, like as a producer, there's stuff that I shot and shit that I put up with before that I was like, uh, why did I like, yeah do that. Yep. Yep. I completely get it. (laughs) I completely get it. (laughs) And cause it's like, you know, for us, like, you know, as the producer who shoots for like brand, like brands, like I've shot you for Naughty America. Yeah. I still work for browsers and twisties and stuff. We also don't get residuals, you know, like a one-time fee and then we send it and we don't ever make money off that scene ever. Right. Which is fine. But I just think about like all of the hours and the time that I put into, you know, like, Everything. 18. I mean, this wasn't common, but there was a couple times I had 18 hour days, 16 hour days. I remember those on some features. <laughs> and you don't get paid more for that. Nope. Nothing. It, I mean, and I just look back and I'm just like, why the fuck did I do that? You know what I mean? And now, like, if somebody asked me to do a night shoot, I'm like, no, kick rocks. Yeah, kick rocks. No, <laughs> way am I doing a night kick shoot? rocks. <laughs> yeah. I'm such a perfectionist and I feel like too, like I like to, you know, I mean that yeah, there were days where I was on set for mainstream films and it was like 16 hour days and it's like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah. So I can only imagine a producer like being like they want to put out the best product. That's mm-hmm. your name that's attached to it forever. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel as a performer. Like when it's when it's game time. 
let's go. And yeah. and I just want to put out the best scene that I can because, and which is why now I've gotten really picky with the talent that I work with. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to work with new guys because if they fail or they're, you know, not so strong, that's yeah. going to bring my scene rating down and mm-hmm. then fans are disappointed. And, you know, for someone that only shoots two to four times a month, I'm like, I want the best guys with me. <laughs> We're going to put out a fire, incredible scene. <laughs> not only that, but like when a guy fails on set, it's like one of the most awkward situations oh, I know you can ever be in there's nothing worse than like this poor guy who's just like yeah like, pulling like a fuck it's like pulling like a worm yeah I know you know I gotta imagine it's awkward for you though because it's like what do you say like like me I'm just kind of like well that's on you buddy yeah my shit works today yeah I mean because as a producer you get to a point where you got to call it for sure you have to and you have to go up to him and be like hey so it looks like you're probably not gonna get a boner today so I'm playing at this location by the hour um I've already called somebody else who yeah who can replace you yeah so can you just like go home yeah between your legs it's like so awful I bet it's gonna be so awful for you <laughs> I'm really can my PA do this? <laughs> I actually, you know what? Okay, so I had an incidence once when I was shooting for DP Star. This is Digital Playground and not digital, not double penetration star, but it was Digital Playground Star and it was like this fucking like um, contest to see like who's going to become the next like Digital Playground contract girl. And so there were all these like challenges that the girl, these girls had to do. And so we hired this guy, I won't name him. Um, but it was like, basically these girls had to show like their blowjob skills. Uh And so basically, honestly, like this poor guy had to keep, and it was like a little bit of acting and then like a blowjob. So it was like, he was a waiter and I think she was a wait or she was a customer. And I, I can't remember the scenario. So there was a little bit of interaction in terms of like him being a waiter, her being a customer. And then like, for some reason she ends up blowing him, you know, porn logic. Yeah. But this guy, like, you know, and we had to put a timer on all of these scenes. So like, we couldn't be filming each one for more than like five minutes or something. And there's like 10 girls that got to do this. So this guy's got to come out, do this acting scenario. Then he's got to be hard right away because we don't have time to film this. The girl's got to blow him for like three minutes. And like, she's like gagging and like trying to like, do the best blowjob she can. Yeah. Probably being a little bit rough with him. Yeah. And then like we call time and then he's got to do it all over again. Oh, With wow. the next girl. Oh, geez. I- <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> So, like, kind of understandably, he couldn't really get his dick to work. Oh, God. So I had to call in Charles Dara. Oh, yeah, he's solid. Who was fucking great. So yeah. I called Charles, and I had to send this guy home. So I made my PA do it. Oh, I would have. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you need to tell him that we have to send him home. Yeah. And all the executives from Digital Playground were there. Oh. And, like, I think... I think Nikki Benz was a judge. Oh my God. And so it was like. That's a lot of pressure. So much pressure. Yeah. So much pressure. Yeah. So when I, you know, think about all the DMs you get about guys like, oh, I want to do porn. I'm like, do you? Do you? Do you you really? really have no clue because I have seen everything. I know you have too. And I'm like, it's not as glamorous as you think. It really isn't. Like, and the best thing now, it's like, get an OnlyFans. Get an OnlyFans, start working with some girls. And then maybe someday you can work your way to the big leagues mm-hmm. and, you know, get, you know, the top tier girls, you know, that you mm-hmm. see on Pornhub or whatever. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. That's the other thing too, that I tell guys, I'm like, you know, you're not going to start your first scene's probably not going to be with Rochelle Ryan. Right. You're going to start with like a brand new girl or, mm-hmm. or whoever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, so many guys that I've interviewed have told me that like their first scene was like a blow bang. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Which makes sense because if, See if you, you can, can stay hard around a group of guys. Exactly. Because if you can do that, then like, yeah, you might have a shot. And secondly, like if you fail, then you can like kind of sneak backwards into like the throng of hard dicks and like nobody's really going to notice. Like For we're sure. not going to lose the scene. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Because if like one dick out of six dicks doesn't work, like yeah. you can still make a scene work with still five other dicks. other ones. <laughs> still can make it happen. (laughs) I always tell guys that I'm like, I'm like, if they say they want to get into porn, I'm like, invite over the football team at your college. If you can stay hard, jerk off and come call me. Yeah, I know. Right. Most likely it's a no. (laughs) (laughs) Who are some of the, are there any like male talent that were new when you worked with them that are like, 
doing really well now? And did you see that potential at the beginning? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, uh, I can't really think any names off the top of my head right now, but I recently just shot with um, Justice Young. Okay. He actually, September Dawn, had him drive me to my first scene ever because I had just moved to LA and I was like, she was like, nope, I'm going to have a driver take you. I was like, all right, cool. And he was in the business. And then um, I think he left for a little bit and started doing music and other stuff. And then we actually just shot together for our OnlyFans. So it was really cool because I was like, oh my gosh, like 16 years ago, you drove me to my first first set. Like, oh yeah, it was pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. But I can't really think of anyone, um, off the top of my head right now. Yeah. I mean, kind of same here because I didn't, we didn't really shoot like same with you. Like I almost never shoot new guys Yeah, just because like, I just don't want to be like the training ground for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, yeah, the possibility of just losing the day and all the money and it's just like, it's no, just, thanks. Like, oh, <laughs> no, thanks. No, thanks. Go do the blow bang. <laughs> I, you know, when I was a newbie, I worked with like all the veteran guys mm -hmm. like, um, Mark Wood and John Strong and mm -hmm. Peter North. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Michael Stefano, him and I actually recently just worked together mm. and that was amazing. I think he's in his like early fifties. And I was like, Michael, I was like, you perform way better than some of these 20 year olds. <laughs> like He threw me all around that hotel room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like these, the guys who really last in the industry are really you know, they're like one of a kind. Oh it's yeah. It's such a hard job to do. But I could like, never be male talent. No. Never. But like if they have what it takes, like they're, you know, I mean, you can work forever. hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I mean, Michael's got to be like 51, 52 now mm -hmm. and he is killing it. And he just, he loves women. And mm -hmm. I love men like that that yeah. just want to like devour you. Yeah. So yeah, we had a blast. Like <laughs> who are some of your favorite uh, talent, male and female to work with? Um, males, um, probably Lucas Frost. Um, he's great. Yeah. Lucas is awesome. Um, I requested him, like we have shot together so much. He's like my porno boyfriend. <laughs> like he's probably so sick of me. Like, oh my God, Rochelle again. But you know what? Like he's good. He's clean. He smell nice. He's great at acting. He's always hard. We have great scenes together. I'm like, that is all I want. Mm -hmm. Um, Charles Darrow's great. Mm -hmm. Kieran, um, yeah, Tony Rubino, J Mac. Uh, I love Johnny the Kid. He's recently changed his name to Johnny Love because oh a lot of his man. videos in uh, were getting flagged on Pornhub because his name was Johnny the Kid. Oh, of course. Yeah. The kid word. Oh, yeah. So he's his right. new stage name is Johnny Love. But yeah, okay. he's one of my favorites too. Is he young or? Yeah, he's young, based in South Florida. I don't really think he comes out to LA and okay. Vegas much, but um, he's fantastic. I love him. He's one of my favorites. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, having the right scene partner is everything. hundred percent. Like hundred percent. when I know I'm doing a scene and I've got like two good performers, I'm just like, ugh. Easy day. Easy day at the office. Easy day. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so grateful now. Like the only boy girl scenes I shoot are for browsers and I only do their showcases. Yeah. So like I'm always working with like their contract girls oh, yeah. most of the time yep. and then like top tier male talent. So I'm yeah. like. Yeah. Easy day at the easy office. Easy day. Like yeah. I just shot Alexis Fox and like Mick Blue was like. Oh easy. yeah. Easy. My, my next scene is with uh, Lulu Chu, Ryan Keeley and Isaiah Maxwell. I'm like. Easy day. Easy yep. day. Yep. Like, totally. Just so chill. <laughs> yep. I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about Rochelle. So uh, hang tight. I'll be right back. Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? What interferes with your happiness? These are questions that I think we all ask ourselves from time to time. And having a professional help us sort through all the noise in our heads can make a world of difference. We talk a lot about mental health on the show, which is why I'm so happy to have BetterHelp sponsoring this episode. As someone who has personally had tons of therapy, I couldn't recommend a service like this enough. And look, you don't have to be on the verge of a nervous breakdown to benefit from therapy. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And if you find that your match therapist isn't working for you, BetterHelp makes it free and easy to find a new one. If the idea of walking into a therapist's office and having a session face-to-face -face fills you with anxiety, try connecting online in the safety and comfort of your own home. It's more affordable than traditional counseling and financial aid is available. 
you can start talking to someone within 48 hours. And it's available worldwide. As a listener, you get 10% off of your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash Holly Randall. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Holly Randall for 10% off today. All right, everybody, we are back. So, Rochelle, you've been very open about the fact that you like younger men. I do. So <laughs> tell us. Tell us a little bit about that. Why do you like younger men? It came about actually with Lucas Frost. Oh, so it's all his fault. It's his fault. <laughs> I blame him all the time. Kind of. He's partial to blame. Um, but it was kind of like I was trying to get booked when I was around like the age of 28. And um, some people are like, eh, like at 28, you're at that weird stage where it's like, I was never a young girl because I came in the industry with fake boobs and stuff. So I could never do like young girl teeny bopper stuff. So you're just like the hot chick, Mm -hmm. you know? And then- um, And strangely enough with like the algorithms and like the way that we've made porn very niche, yeah, you're right. That's almost like a weird age to be where like you can't do the teen porn, you can't do the MILF porn. Can't do MILF. So finally I started getting booked as a MILF when I was like in my, like when I first turned 30 and um, I did a scene for New Sensations with Lucas and, and he just came on set and he was such a little baby face and like just so sweet and we just had such a great scene and he was so young at the time and I was like dang and like we had an amazing scene together and I was like wow maybe I do like young guys and then um I do a lot of stuff with Barstool Sports and they did an article on me and this guy came across it and sent me this really sweet well-worded email long story short we dated for a little bit and he was 10 years younger than me Mm -hmm. I was 33 he was 23 Mm -hmm. but very mature very had his shit together I would never be with a young punk and um that kind of like really brought it out where I was like oh I love young guys and I did want to start dating but like you know I'm almost 37 and most men my age or older were looking at me like oh well when are you going to get out of this little phase and they were looking at, you know, the porn industry is like, oh, this is just a phase for you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, for starters, I have owned a home since I was 26 years old. I've been in, you know, X amount of years. Like this isn't a little phase. Like I'm going to retire from this Mm -hmm. and I don't see myself slowing down anytime soon. I'm kind of in my prime enjoying this and I probably make more money than you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, so, and men are very, and men are very alpha. They want to be able to provide and take care of their woman. So, you know, me coming in, it's what I've been told is very intimidating. I can hold my own. I just need you for loyalty and dick. That's it. So most 20 year olds, you know, they're just kind of like rock on good for you. They're mm-hmm. like, you know, a woman in power. They think it's amazing. And that kind of all played into like my love for like the 20 year olds, like mm. 25 to 28 is like my sweet spot. Like I don't really like them younger than 25 because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's still a little bit of immaturity that I just don't want to deal with. So right. 25 to 28 is like the move right there. <laughs> yeah, I know that makes sense. It's funny, actually, when you mentioned Lucas Frost, I remembered that I shot one of his first scenes. So oh, really? Because spe- earlier we were talking about guys who, you know, maybe did like their one of their early scenes and they ended up being like really good. And I remember- He's he, probably one of them. He Yeah, he filled in last minute for somebody for a digital playground feature. And I think he- he may have done one or two scenes. It was like he'd like almost no experience. And I was so nervous because yeah. I hate shooting new guys, like we said. And I was like, this scene's going to tank. And it was <laughs> a small room. And it was like, yeah. and he fucking killed it. And you know, he killed when it. he started, he didn't do blow bangs, none of that. His first yeah. scene was just straight boy-girl scene. He's on natural, no, doesn't use Viagra. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he is now, but I know he never has like with me or with mm-hmm. anyone else. Like, Yeah. I can't say enough good things about him. I will also say that someone like him, and you see this uh, with other like successful male performers, he's very into like health and fitness and yes. very about like what he eats and yes. like, working out and yes. very like focused on. I love men that. like that. Yeah. I love that. And I think that helps them. Hundred percent, hundred percent, just to feel good overall and to perform better mm-hmm. and just you know their skin looks good and their body looks good. And, yeah. yeah. Totally. Because, I mean, you know how all of us women are in the business. Like, that's all it is with us. Like, we work out. We take care of our bodies between upkeep and everything. Mm -hmm. So, it's very important. (laughs) Yeah, you want somebody else who's also, like, 
I mean, peak feel. I mean, you guys are sexual athletes, really. I say that all the time that I am a sexual athlete. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, people who like are like, oh, what you just lay on your back, no, and, like, no. open your legs, like, no. Have you ever done reverse cowgirl for oh, ten my minutes? Groceries. Okay. Like, when it's shot in POV on a squishy couch or a bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or in like hundred degree heat or oh, thirty degrees, Lord. like Lord. Yeah, you. I always say that that I am a sexual athlete. <laughs> what are some of the toughest scenes that you've ever done? Um, toughest scenes. Um, probably uh, just you know if I ever have worked with a new guy where I have to lead the scene, mm-hmm. and then and then I start getting nervous because I feel all the pressure on me mm-hmm. and, and me like. It's, it's hard for me to really enjoy the sex when I am shooting because I'm in my own head a lot. I'm like, oh, God, stretch out, suck in your stomach. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about my orgasm. It's about whoever's buying this scene and watching. It's about their orgasm. And, yeah. you know, so if I'm with, like, a newer guy or a guy that's struggling, then I'm like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. I have to carry this scene. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then if it's POV, it's like, oh, God, now it's really all me. Like, it actually recently happened to me. Um, I was shooting for... Um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't name the company, but I was shooting for a top company and the male talent, he gets there. And um, I was talking to him before the scene, like, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? How you feeling? And he went to like one of them uh, trampoline places where you can like, you know, just like an adult trampoline one. So his legs were shot. He was exhausted. Um, so he, like, he was just struggling. Like he was having to like bend backwards and do all, cause you know, it was all POV. And, um, so he was really struggling. And that was when I was like, all right, I'm stepping up to the play. So I was kind of carrying the scene. And then he was complaining. He's like, I've worked every single day and blah, blah, blah. And I just shot with a girl that had an IUD in. And I was just like, all right, dude, just shut up now. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. So those are just days where it's very challenging because I want to put the best, you know, content out there for the world to see forever. So days like that, it's very challenging and it's challenging. I used to, um, I used to work with a lot of new women mm. and now like, as I've gotten older, I've realized that I'm not really into women. Like, I just love men. Mm -hmm. I'll still work with a girl, but, like, I won't, like, I don't like straight girl-on-girl scenes. If it's a boy-girl-girl and we could share a guy, I'm, like, cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm still very picky. I'm, like, "Eh, I don't want to work with new girls because... Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to carry the scene. Whew, yeah. So that's interesting. And it's interesting that you would admit that because, you know, most girls, I mean, look, we all know there are some, like, gay for pay girls in the industry. There are yeah. girls that will do. We, there's even a girl um, who I, of course, won't name, but, like, everybody knows who she is, who does exclusively girl-girl scenes, who's, like, well-known to, like, not be into girls at all. Oh, yeah. But, like, she only does girl-girl scenes, so it's, like, really kind of bizarre. But yeah. I think there's this mentality that, like, oh, if you do girl-girl scenes, it's, like, there's less stigma around that than yeah, there yeah, is yeah. With, with boy-girl scenes. Yep. And so a lot of times girls will only do girl-girl um, and then, like, you know, boy, girls like that next step that, I don't know, some people are afraid to take, but, um, it's very rare that there's a girl who's like, Hey, I'm not really into girls. Like, yeah. I want to do boy girl. Not I girl love girl. doing boy. Like it's in the older I get, the more I love and appreciate men. Like, mm. don't get me wrong. I'm not grossed out by women. I mean, I'm doing a boy girl, girl scene tomorrow. Mm. I'm not grossed out, but I think like one-on-one I'm like, Oh, I'm not good. And I also have a lot of PTSD, Holly, because I would get put because I am the MILF. I get put with these young girls. Yeah. And and I feel as a performer, as a veteran performer, that it is my job that if I'm not helping these new girls and kind of coaching them along the way, because I didn't really have that mm-hmm. coming into the into the industry. So, um, you know, some of these girls, they just don't know how to hygiene wise, take care of themselves. And I've had days where I'm like. I am not shooting with this girl until she gets a toothbrush and cleans all the plaque off her tongue. Mm -hmm. Like I just, she's not getting near me. And it's like, that's frustrating because we're on a set with mostly men and and like I would pull her to the side and you know, she didn't have a cleaning kit. And that was when I was like, oh, I can't do chicks anymore. (laughs) Unless it's somebody like, you know, Angela White or Alexis Fox, like a big name girl where it's like, oh, I'm not worried. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I've had those experiences too where I have a new girl. I mean- Oh. We always have like everything on set. I have douches. Babies. Oh, I remember. I have, yeah. <laughs> I have like toothbrushes and stuff, but like, yeah, there's nothing worse than having to pull a girl aside and be like, Hey, 
the other girl doesn't want to work with you because your vagina smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just like, and then they're just like, wait, what? And yeah. Like, yeah, so. <laughs> I could never dude. do your job. <laughs> like, it's just like. It's it's tough. It's so hard. I mean, like, towards the end, um, I was just really like, hey, like, I would pull the girl aside and be like, hey, we got to fix this situation because otherwise I'm going to, I can't do the scene. Because yeah. I just get, I have such a sensitive nose, too, that, mm-hmm. like, I get really grossed out. And, and the same with guys, too. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I know when I show up on set, I'm ready to go. Everything's prim and proper. You are not just going to baby wipe. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to go in there and, like, take a little rinse off in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't get into it if I smell any funkiness. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, um. Um, I've had some of the most awkward conversations of my Ooh. life doing this. Oh, I can episode. I can only imagine. Fucking can terrible. only imagine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so glad. Like I said, I'm at a place now where I'm I'm mostly shooting like veteran performers. For sure. Like, That's oh, awesome. I don't have to worry about any of this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's hard. Yeah. So you mentioned um, you know, younger girls, working with younger girls in the industry and and maybe trying to give them some guidance. Did you say that you came in the industry when you were twenty eight? Is that twenty one? I did 21. my very first scene okay. on my twenty first birthday. Um it was for seehersquirt.com. Okay. And I show up on set in you know, it was just got my makeup done and then did pretty girl pictures, which of course I love that. That's mm-hmm. literally my favorite part. And I was doing photo shoots and stuff like that before I got into the industry. So it was just second nature. It was mm-hmm. just, I loved it. And then, so we're getting ready for the scene. It was with Joey Ray. He recently just passed away. Yeah. I don't know if you saw yeah, that. I know. And um, Joey and I were friends before that. We were actually talking on MySpace. <laughs> so we kind of knew each other. And um it comes down in the director, Derek Dozier. He was like, hey, it's for a see her squirt. And I was like, um, I don't know how to squirt. <laughs> I was like, maybe my agent booked me on the wrong shoot. And he was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, we fake it. And I was like, well, how do you fake it? And they were like, well, we just fill up a douche bottle with warm water. You pump it in you, hold it, and then we'll put his dick right there and you just push it out. And I was like, oh, well, I can do this. And um, so it was pretty cool. I just, I was very eager to get on set. And like, whenever I see that scene, I'm like, oh. Like, Mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to open up to the camera. I just knew that I wanted to get glammed up, take pretty pictures and get paid to have sex with hot men. I didn't know Mm -hmm. how much money we made. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a roundabout idea, but I didn't know much. I just knew that's what I wanted to do at that time in my life. And, um, and then here I am 16 years later. So (laughs) it's funny that you mentioned the thing about squirting because like I, again, like it's funny because I've been in the industry for so long, but there's a lot of kinds of scenes that I haven't shot or I've shot very little of. Yeah. It's funny because I was, Leia was here before you and I was telling her how I've shot like maybe two cream pie scenes like my entire career. And oh, I, wow. Like didn't, I didn't really know like how to shoot them to make sure that you saw the cream pie and like do right. you fake it and stuff like that. And I actually called quasar to oh. ask him how to do that. How do you do this? <laughs> like, how do I make sure that like, you know, every, like we see it and, and squirting was another thing that I haven't really shot that much of. And oh. I didn't realize until like, I mean, I guess I did realize, but I don't know why it never occurred to me until like recently. Yeah. You can just fake the squirting. Yeah. Like if the squirting didn't happen in the scene and be like, well, the squirting didn't happen in the scene. So you didn't get your squirting scene. Like not realizing that I could just fake it like everybody else does and stick the douche up and yep. squirt the water. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, and and we did that. And, um, it, I mean, I guess it worked. Like, I, I think it was like it started from – my very first scene. And then, um, then I shot for evil angel. I can't remember the name super squirters or something, but it was when evil angel, when everything was going down with the obscenity and all that. And that scene was played in front of a federal grand jury. (gasps) My scene with Angela stone, I believe. Wow. She's super old school. I mean, this was going back to like 2007. Like I remember like Kevin Moore was like the PA at the time for Evil Angel. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And I mean, I just remember her just chugging water that day. So I was like, oh, I know what's going on. <laughs> so, okay. So they played that that video trying to say that basically your squirting scene was obscene. It, obscene because it was considered pissing. Right. Yeah. Which... I don't know the outcome. I can't remember exactly what the outcome of that one was, but that's all I remember is that was played in front of a federal grand jury. I was like, oh, awesome. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, hope they liked it. (laughs) Hope they liked it. I wonder how many new fans you got from that. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) I was like, 
Michelle Ryan. Yeah, let me jot this name down. Sadly, OnlyFans wasn't around at that time. Oh my gosh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Can you imagine getting that DM? So I saw your video in a courtroom today. <laughs> and um, right? I just thought, you know, you're such a great squirter. <laughs> That'd be amazing. It's funny, actually, that it was brought up for, like, the pissing thing because there's so much debate in the industry about whether or not squirting is squirting or if it's pissing. Right. But, like, surprise, guys, usually it's water that we put in a douche and yep. stuck up their vagina. So just there's your answer. This. <laughs> chugging gallons of these. <laughs> so would you say it's probably most of the time squirt? I mean, sorry, piss. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. 100%. Yeah. I think like when you, I mean, I know that there's natural squirting. I know there is natural squirting because I have naturally done it, but it's so little. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's very, very it's not little. It's shooting across It's the not freaking gushing. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, like, um, like everything else, porn is, you know, uh, it's a fantasy. It's 100%. Bigger than life. Yep, 100%. <laughs> so you got into the industry at 21. Um, do you feel like you were in the right headspace to get into the industry? Do you wish that you had waited till later? Do you wish you'd started earlier? Do you think it was the perfect time? I think 21 is a great age to get into the industry. I think 18 is a little too young. Mm. Um, I was working as a dancer. I was in school. I was also a personal assistant to a very rich woman. So I had a little bit of life experience. I held a job. I had a couple of jobs. Mm -hmm. I was in school. Um, and then too, some of the award shows and, and clubs where they have them at, you have to be 21 to get in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some of these girls, they get into 18. I'm like, oh my gosh, like do something else first. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. go hold a job. Like you just became legal. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to each his own, who am I to say, you know, if that's, if that's their calling, their path, what they want to do, Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I do know some girls who have come in at 18 and feel like they were, that was the right time for them and they yeah. were like emotionally ready. But I think it's probably, that's probably not the norm. Yeah. But it's like one of those situations where you can't like change. It's very risky and very much a slippery slope to change the law. Oh yeah. To make it 21. Right. It's like, well, you can go fight in a war at 18. Yeah. You can, like, I could buy it. I mean, you're considered an adult by yeah, at 18. Yep. At 18. So like, you know, the adult industry. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like those, one of those things where it's like, well, maybe we would advise that 21 would be a better age, but you know, I did a scene with Lil D. He was the Bang Bros contract guy. He was still in high school. 18, no way. still in high school. I did his second scene ever. And I was just kind of like, what? <laughs> you are still in high school? Like, is this legal? Are we sure, bang bros? Like, like, what do we need to do? Like, did everybody do their due diligence on this kid? And, um, you know, it was a great scene. The setup for it was... Um, there was a lot of like pushback, like I was not comfortable. And of course, Bang Bros, they gave me the script that day when I showed up on set and it was very racially kind of like motivated. Yeah. And I was just like, Hey, I was like, I'm not saying this stuff. I'm not doing this. So we ended up calling corporate and they were like, and the, the one that was in charge at the time of all the scripts and everything going out, the talent coordinator, he was like, well, I'm black and I wrote the script. And I was like, well, I don't care. The viewers aren't going to know that. And I'm not saying and doing a lot of this stuff. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the, like little D came to me. He was like, thank you so much. He was like, you know, for stepping up and saying that. And I was like, oh, I was about to go home. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I don't think I can do this. And so they ended up working it where he, I said, look, as long as, you know, he's comfortable and okay with this, I said, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to say and do. And, um, it's kind of interesting and also sad how you had to be the one to 100%. like put the brakes on that, how him as the male contract performer right. couldn't be like, Hey, like. I'm a black man and I'm uncomfortable with what's in the script. I think he was just still so new that he just didn't know what he could say and not say and get away with. But I was just like, look, I can't put something like that out there and have my fans think that I'm okay with this. And, mm -hmm. you know, the fans, they don't know. They don't know that we're getting scripts from corporate and where this is coming from. And they want us to say and do this stuff. And mm -hmm. I was just like, no. Yeah. Like, absolutely not. I will go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, good for you for standing up. Yeah, for, for like sure. That. 
Because I think everybody has a story where they've been presented with a script that they're very uncomfortable with. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And I had tons of those when I first started off in the industry. And, you know, it's like I was still so new where I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to upset the director, or, you know. And I remember just so many things, showing up to set sick, working while I was sick. And, you know, you just don't want to – you don't want to ruin the day. You don't want to upset your agent, the mm-hmm. director and stuff. And now I'm just kind of like, oh, no, if I – don't feel good or whatever it is like mm-hmm. I will call it yeah yeah. <laughs> and, yeah I mean but it took like what 16 years of experience in the 100%. industry to get you there yeah I do feel like brands I mean I'm only shooting for twisties and browsers now but I do feel like since the pandemic which I think really changed a lot of people's life in terms yes. of like so many people were able to make money on their personal content platforms and performers were able to be more empowered um, but I do feel like brands are now like so much more cognizant of the performers and like their needs and you know what they're comfortable with and what they're not comfortable with right because I mean I can say specifically at MindGeek which is the parent company oh, yeah. for browsers and twisties they're very much about like you know, making sure that the oh, talent 100%. is okay with what they're doing. Yep. If there's anything in the script that the talent wants to tweak or wardrobe and hair, they're like, yes. absolutely, whatever they want to change. If they don't like this, like we will, like there, there's a Twisties Treat of the Month coming up that I'm doing in June. And um, we presented the concept to her and she kind of like, she didn't like hate it. She was like, oh, it's okay. Like, I'm not excited about it, but like, sure, I'll do it. And Twisties went back and they were like, okay, great. Let's change it. Like, let's oh, make that's it. that's awesome. Let's make it something she's excited about. Like, we uh, want them to be excited about it. We yeah. We completely revamped the concept and I think it's so much better. Now. Oh, that's amazing. But that wouldn't have happened like five years ago. No, never. It would have like, been like, oh, she's being a diva. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Send her home. We'll replace her. Mm-hmm. You know, dime a dozen out there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I know. I remember like we never used to have consent like checklists mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, are you okay with this, this, and this? And everything has to get, you know, recorded and filmed and I get that there has been situations where it's like you have to do that to cover your ass Mm -hmm. I get it but also too I think it's opened up like the communication in a much healthier way I've been like advocating for consent checklists for a while because it's so common in the BDSM community oh yeah 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 they do that all the time like kink but like the more like vanilla companies like the regular scenes they weren't really you know, I think people felt like, oh, we don't need to do that. But I think it's important. 100%. I completely agree. Yeah. And I just feel like it's made just a better working environment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep, totally. Rochelle, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's been thank such you. such a pleasure. I do have a couple of questions for you from my Patreon members, if you're okay doing that in like a special little quick bonus segment for them. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online, plug all your links, social yes. media? Yes. Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is at Rochelle Ryan, just my name. And then Instagram is only Rochelle Ryan. Both are verified. So please don't fall for any scammers. Like it is not me. Mm -hmm. Dear God, it is not me. And then OnlyFans, onlyfans OnlyFans.com backslash Rochelle Ryan. Fantastic. And you guys can find me, as always, at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, I'm also on TikTok. Holly Randall Unfiltered. And of course, if you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week. <laughs>